I don't know if you guys are shocked by this, but uh, I mean, come on. Once again, another example of feds on parade. They couldn't quite get enough out of that failed kidnapping attempt in uh, Michigan. So, hey, they had to send 20 federal assets embedded at Capitol on January 6th. Court filing says so. That whole instigator theory might be something to that now, don't you think? We've just seen two acquittals, two hung juries. And, uh, yeah, the said Whitmer kidnapping plot, that's maybe why there's been such of a fall-off in coverage when it comes to the actual outcomes of a lot of these detentions for people associated with January 6th. Okay, you've seen somebody get acquitted. You've seen a bunch of people plea down to basically trespassing. you seen that one guy, well, you didn't, okay, see him. He unfortunately ended up yeeting himself before his sentencing because they were seeking aggravated charges against him for a 20-minute walk through the Capitol. But yet the commission still plunges forward and it wants to subpoena everybody and it wants prime time coverage of their investigation. But then when you have accusations like this, it makes it look like even more of a fucking circus. Like somebody fucking set up the tent for God's sakes. But remember guys, my oath keepers, right? They were down there with their scissors and uh, the bike helmets. Like what the fuck were they going to do? At least 20 FBI and ATF officials. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Assets. Assets is what's being alleged. We're embedded around the U.S. Capitol on January 6, 2021. A defense attorney wrote in a court filing on April 12th, the disclosure was made in a motion uh, seeking to dismiss seditious conspiracy and obstruction charges against 10 Oath Keeper defendants in one of the most prominent January 6 criminal cases. Well, good luck, but this is also being filed in Washington, D.C., so, you know... Of the more favorable and level-headed decisions, most of them haven't come out of Washington, D.C., let's be fair. Uh, David W. Fisher, attorney for Thomas E. Caldwell of Berryville, Virginia, filed a 41-page motion to dismiss four counts on behalf of all Oath Keepers case defendants uh, before U.S. District Judge Amit Pay or Amit. P. Meta in Washington, D.C. Caldwell has charged, oh, is charged in the indictment, but is not a member of the Oath Keepers, he told the Epoch Times in March. Yeah, he's a part of that uh, group of Oath Keepers who got charged, but he doesn't even have membership to the group, so what the fuck? And again, what are the Oath Keepers after all? Basically, a fucking, I don't know, like a gentleman's club? For being fucking honest about this. Oh no, it's a violent militia who wants to uphold the United States Constitution. And, um, yeah, they brought a bunch of guns. Oh no, wait, they didn't bring any weaponry? Oh, okay, cool, but zip ties. Whatever. It's fucking garbage. At least 20 FBI and ATF assets were embedded around the Capitol on January 6th. What's his name? Ray Epps? Anyways, <laughs> read a foot or a footnote on page 6 of the motion. No other details were provided in the document. The footnote uh, said defense attorneys combed through a mountain of discovery, including FBI oh, forms, 302 summaries of interviews conducted by FBI agents. In addition, the information about law enforcement assets on the ground at the Capitol. The footnote says the Oath Keepers were being monitored and recorded prior to January 6th. Exactly. They have far too many American flags. They have to be up to something. And what's with that Gadsden flag over there? That yellow doesn't look like the correct hue. They've got to be up to something. And what about their fondness for the letter Q? Whatever. Pouring over evidence turned over in discovery by prosecutors in two major Oath Keepers cases has not found one iota of proof. Yeah, exactly. That just hasn't stopped plea deals and um, politically charged jury decisions for coming out. But yeah, no, not any proof. Like, what could you actually prove on this? Oh my god, you were thinking about maybe committing sedition. How exactly were you hoping to do that? By obstructing a debate cool again we could just walk down the line of thought process on this but at the end of the day a couple of windows were broke and uh everybody that was actually went into the capital which was a super small minority of the people that were actually there most of them stuck around to help clean up afterwards yeah just big big sedition went on january 6th right well yeah back to this anyways uh once again yes said no or not one iota of proof has been found and that defendants had any plan, intention, design, or scheme to specifically enter the Capitol building on January 6th. The motion said, yep, exactly. No, they were planning on parlor. Sure they were. 
Uh, Fisher told the Epoch Times uh, that they could not comment on the motion or provide further detail on the footnote. Yeah, open investigation, open case. You can't make a comment on that, obviously. Since the first arrest of January 6th defendants in early 2021, there have been extensive speculation and questions from attorneys, defendants, case observers, and the members of Congress about the role of law enforcement played that day. Yeah, specifically like the ones that were there who didn't really look like they were putting up too much of a fuss about it and hell, even moving some barricades out of the way and then also some other guys just opening up the door saying come on in you look cold outside just don't break anything and if you guys need a little extra space just feel free to move the velvet ropes off to the side oh you didn't even knock them down how sweet of you take a look at these sculptures you like the paintings it sure is warm in here during a senate judiciary committee hearing on january 11th u.s senator ted cruz maybe january 11th of this year because it's been going on for a while uh, grilled top FBI officials on the subject. How many FBI agents or confidential informants ah, actively participated in the events of January 6th? Right. I remember this. I think we talked about this as well. Cruz asked Jill Sanborn, executive assistant, a director of the FBI's national security branch. Don't need to go down this road, but obviously it's always the same people. It's, it's different people, but it's the same people, if you know what I mean. Uh, sir, I'm not sure you can appreciate that I can't go into the specifics of sources and methods, Sanborn said. Cruz replied, did the FBI agents or confidential informants actively participate in the events of January 6th? Yes or no? Sir, I can't answer that. And that lack of an answer is an answer in and of itself. Did any FBI agents or confidential informants commit crimes or violence on January 6th? I can't answer that. Well, somebody's going to have to. Jeremy M. Brown, an Oath Keeper member from Florida, uh, who was charged with two January 6th related counts, but is not part of either major Oath Keepers conspiracy case, told the Epoch Times earlier this year that the FBI unsuccessfully tried to recruit him in 2020 to spy on the group. What? No. When asked by me and my girlfriend to produce the warrants at the time of the arrest, they refused to produce them, Brown said. Uh, one agent was even recorded stating, uh, we don't know what we are looking for yet. Uh, they should look for a copy of the Constitution and read it <laughs> based so looking at a little bit more of this oath keepers case which again i've i've heard about it i just haven't done any digging on this because it's like yeah okay these idiots who went into the capitol building yeah you committed a crime but ugh, to say that it's worse than 9 11 the, the fucking squad and kamala harris or make comparisons to fucking pearl harbor it's just so fucking preposterous. If you went into the building, you probably knew you were doing something fucked up, okay? And especially if you breached the Senate and made all of those geriatrics uh, quickly shuffle out of the room. And you know what? Maybe one of them ended up tweaking their hip. It's like, yeah, is that wrong? Of course it is. But on the grand scheme of things, should all of this be done and dusted a year ago? Yeah, very much so. Because it's, what, fucking, yeah, April 15th already, 2022. This happened January 6th, 2021, for fuck's sakes. God damn it. But anyways, yeah, this Oath Keepers case. Uh, it's the Oath Keepers proper, including founder Elmer Stewart Rhodes. Okay, a, a guy named Elmer. Okay, I wouldn't be scared of anybody who committed a crime with the surname, or rather given name Elmer. Unless it was like 1820, but they're charged with conspiring to enter the Capitol on January 6th. So were they conspiring to enter it or did they actually enter it? And to prevent the certification of the Electoral College votes uh, from the January 6th, uh, I'm sorry, 2020 presidential election. That sounds like a made up rule and a made up law that you could just charge them with. Anyways, protests and rioting on January 6th interrupted a joint session of Congress for about six hours. Oh, the horror! The plebs have come to see the building where the elites work. How dare they! Uh, the roads, baby. Uh, the fendin' thick dismissal on the count one through four. No, not that roads. Um, on the grounds uh, that the indictment fails to state an offense as to each count. No, we're just gonna charge them with something. Well, how did they? Um, how did they violate that um, stated rule in law? Shut your mouth. Uh, Fisher wrote in his motion, the four counts covered in the motion to dismiss all refer to obstructing a proceeding or preventing an of or an officer from discharging duties. Okay. 
Under Title 18 of the U.S. Code, a seditious conspiracy charge requires proof that the purpose of the defendant's seditious conspiracy was to forcibly obstruct a person authorized to execute a law. Well, that person was attempting to execute the particular law opposed by the defendants. Did you successfully or did you try to stop something from happening? And were you successful or would your plans have led to the success of that? But they didn't have any plans to do that. So that's a, that's a big problem. Don't you think? For binding precedent, however, members of Congress are constitutionally prohibited from excluding any law of the United States, the motion says. Additionally, per binding precedent, the Electoral College certification process did not constitute any execution of any law of the United States. Yeah, exactly. Because going through that entire rigmarole, okay, that was broadcast on C-SPAN, that's not actually necessary, okay? Because the, elector the electors from the states already cast their votes, so this was just the, the formal process. So was there anything really violated there? That's the question that's being asked, okay? As to the letter of the law, no. But this is, once again, Washington, D.C. With a bunch of enraged people that still think that it was basically the Klan storming the fucking gates over a year and change ago. So, could be anything. Anyways, uh, counts two and three of the indictment are brought under 18 U.S.C. 1512. C, uh, that uh, the, oh, that law only applies to obstructive acts related to the destruction of evidence, the motion said. What? <laughs> the argument that is cited in March by U.S. District Judge Carl J. Nichols, who dismissed the same obstruction charge in two other January 6th cases. Oh, there's already precedent on the books for that. So, count for uh, the defendants of conspiring to prevent an officer from discharging any duties. <laughs> okay, that's nice and vague. Under binding legal precedent, the motion argues the terms office, officer, and officer of the United States take their meaning from the appointments clause of the United States Constitution. This is getting so technical, but it's fun. Members of Congress are not officers under the appointments clause, Fisher wrote. Oh, okay. Is this some kind of vague interpretation, or is this going to get fucking dirty? The motion describes the indictment as an obscenely one-sided, selectively edited, and inaccurate representation of the Oath Keeper's actions and statements. The Oath Keeper's quick reaction forces. I've seen some of the people that are associated with the Oath Keepers. The last thing they'd be able to do is any sort of quick reaction, if you know what I mean. Uh, described in the criminal complaint, are being ready to assist in the attack on the Capitol with men and armaments. Oh my god, but what about the women? Okay, what about equal representation within the Oath Keepers? Oh, uh, we're actually standing in a Virginia... Oh, we're actually standing by in Virginia in case the Oath Keepers in D.C. were attacked or threatened by Antifa. The motion said, oh my god, this is just LARPing at its finest. Every scrap of evidence reviewed confirms that the QRFs, which were utilized on numerous prior dates, were intended to rescue forces in the event that the Oath Keepers were attacked by Antifa. Oh my god, if, if the Indians decided to fight back against the Cowboys and, and the Cowboys can get proper cap gun refillments. Fucking Christ. Or a similar contingency, and not to attack the Capitol building, the filing said. In a companion motion filed on behalf of defendant Kelly Meggs, that's two girls, that's, I, I, I won't hear anything to the, to the contrary. Attorney Jonathan Mosley, Mosley, sure, described the notion of opposing the lawful transfer of presidential power as a thought crime, and that the charge in the indictment as devoid of supporting factual allegations. Yeah, it's a lot of, like, old school tactics kind of twist the meaning of words in order to try to make them fit your reality and it really looks like they're falling on their face on this one the united states government this is the ones who are actually charging these people and it's like you you don't even know where the people who were associated with the oath keepers actually were they were well the fuck far away from the capital when all this shit was breaking down okay and the people that you are charging or have charged in the past weren't actual Oath Keepers, but you said they were. So what are we doing here? I know what we're doing here. Miscarrying justice. This shit should all be done and dusted. But the fact that the feds had something to do with this and that they had at least, at least 20 embedded informants. Oh, you can't leave out the ATF, but it's just a branch and they kind of work together a lot. So you had a bunch of feds in there. Don't know exactly what they're doing. 
but they were there. And that should be something. That should just tip you off a little bit, especially off the heels of the Whitmer kidnapping case. I don't know if we're ever going to find out in a timely fashion what exactly went down, what exactly instigated all of the shit that went down on January 6th in 2021. It might take a few years, might take a couple of decades, might have to wait for a statute of limitation and the unsealing of certain documents, but there's still a lot of questions to be answered on this. And nobody is asking the right questions, okay? Because I want to know what Nancy Pelosi was doing. I want to know why the National Guard was told to stand down. I want to know why the Capitol Police Department weren't at full capacity on that day. What was Muriel Bowser doing? Because she had jurisdiction over the Capitol Police at the same time she's the mayor of Washington, D.C. Why everybody who had the opportunity to have ample amounts of law enforcement there and present at the day, knowing that there would be well in excess of 100,000 people in the area, why those proper precautions weren't taken seriously. Me wonders, me thinks, but uh, me going to be lacking answers, I guess. So enjoy this wonderful day. It's a holy day of sorts. Jeebus got yeeted some few thousand years ago on this day. But don't worry, guys. Don't worry. In a couple of days, he'll be back. And boy, is he going to be pissed. With all that said, thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Dog Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.